Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Grammy Award winning artist Tamar Davis. I've been searching a long time Looking for someone exactly like you I've been traveling all around the world Waiting for you to come through Someone like you Makes it all worthwhile Someone like you Keeps me satisfied Someone exactly like you The Elvin and I had been drafted in the same year And then I remember TV was on And he said, rockets are moving to Houston We were the guys that nobody knew There's something inside of me that says uh, They don't think you're good you gotta prove it to them. I just always had that fire that I had to prove to other people that I could do it. Goes to Tom Donovan, 20 foot of Rudy T2. Within a couple of years, I made the all-star team. Being in that locker room with the guys that I admired a lot was really a big jump for me. As an assistant coach, you make suggestions, but as a head coach, you make a decision. Steve Patterson offered it to me, and I was stunned. And the Rudy Tomjanovich ear begins here in Houston. The whole choke city was a real tough bump to go over. And what crossed my mind is that's going to be my legacy. That's going to be how people remember me. Like we just say, let's stay together. Let's do this together, man. We did it all year together. Let's do it now. Our guys understood what rock and roll was all about. Sammy picks out on the team for the slam. On that, that championship, that was Clutch City. The thing that was so good about our guys is that when we were back against the wall, nobody was better. This is for the fans of the Rockets all over the world. A championship, there's nothing like it. It's like a fairy tale, it, it really was. How sweet it is! Very proud to be a part of Houston. You know, the fans have been great. It was just amazing, very emotional that they were behind us like that. I have one thing to say to those non-believers. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. Welcome to the stage, Bill Worrell, and seven-time NBA world champion, Robert Ory. You know, Robert, when you first came uh, to the Rockets, uh, we introduced you as the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I, I think I remember that. Someone told me you were Dick Clark, so I was like, what's going on with this? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, the good news, Robert, is I'm still here. <laughs> and, You're doing a good job. and Dick's not with us anymore. Um, we're here to honor a good friend of ours. 
And I remember one of the things that Rudy Tomjanovich did when he first got the job was to draft Robert Ory out of Alabama. And that started a run of championships for Houston. And I know you got some great memories of those times. Yeah, no doubt. I know Rudy is one of the most genuine people you ever want to meet. And when the trade fell through, when they traded me to Detroit, which was a really dumb move. Uh, <laughs> and when I came back, Rudy was one of the first people to greet me. And his hug was so genuine. And he was hugging me so tight. I got to a moment I said, Rudy, you can let me go now, dog. I'm back. I'm going to shoot the ball, so you don't have to worry about anything. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> Well, I have so many great memories, too. When Rudy and I first met, I was at Channel 2 in Houston in the, middle, in the mid-70s. And we kind of had to grow up through some tough times. The one thing that I've always remembered about Rudy, the next challenge presented to him, he was always able to conquer it. After being a player, he became a scout, so he did it from the ground up. He then became an assistant coach. And then he became a head coach. And when they offered him the head coaching job, Rudy said, the only thing I really want to do is to see kids wearing Houston Rockets jerseys in Houston. But I don't know if I can do the job. Maybe you ought to give Carol Dawson the job, and I'll work as the assistant. And Carol said, Rudy, the owner wants you as a head coach. You're going to get both of us fired if you don't take the job as a head coach. So Rudy took the head coaching job, and Carol was right there with him the whole way. And so. On behalf of the Rockets players and all of us in Houston, we have so much to thank Rudy Tomjanovich. And we welcome Rudy as the newest inductee into the Houston Sports Hall of Fame. Besides your finger a little bit. Hold on to that. Thank you. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> Can you hold that? It's so great to be back in Houston. I'd like to thank the Houston Sports Authority for this tremendous honor. And I'd like to congratulate Carl and Mary Lou for being inducted. Uh, they not only made Houston proud, they made the whole country proud. So there's three of us going in this year, two sports cars and an old uh, station wagon. <laughs> I want to thank Bill and Robert uh, for the introduction. Uh, Akeem and Clyde were scheduled to be here, and uh, they're off honoring our great uh, uh, Commissioner David Stern, and I love and respect them for doing that. Uh, <clears throat> I am very happy that Robert's here, and I'm very happy that Otis Thorpe is here. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. People, I want to tell you, I don't think I have the words to express how grateful I was to have the opportunity to coach such good people they worked hard, they played together, and they never quit. It was a privilege to coach them, and they are the reason I'm standing here today. Now, as a boy, I played all the sports, but I loved basketball the, the most. Uh, I was a slow starter. In junior high, I did not play one possession the whole year. I got in against the teachers, and I got the ball, and a, the French teacher was checking me, and I gave him a fake, and he went back, and I let it go, air ball. 
The next year I tried out for the freshman team and I found out I was being cut, but before the uh, coach could announce it, I challenged him to a game of one-on-one -on -one and he let me be on the team. You know, I just love basketball. It's all I thought about and I even carved I love basketball into uh, my bedpost. And, and when I went to bed at night, I had my hand on it, and I dreamed. I dreamed. And I'm one of the fortunate people who can say that my life turned out better than my dreams. You know, but it wasn't an, an easy road uh, for me. I had doubters. I had people who didn't believe in me because uh, I wasn't a natural. You know, I wasn't a great uh, athlete, and I had to work at it. And I guess uh, you can say the same thing about my coaching career. I didn't have that authoritative personality that many of the coaches have, but I found a way to communicate with my players just being me. And, and if there's something that I want to pass on to the young kids, just like Carl said, keep dreaming. You know, you have to dream, but you got to know the only way that they come true is through hard, hard work. There's no substitute. Uh, I've had a lot of people help me. Uh, I've had great support. I want to thank uh, Charlie Thomas and then Les Alexander for letting me coach the Rockets. Uh, coaching is, is a very difficult job, but I was, I was pretty well prepared because uh, I worked for some great coaches, uh, Dal Harris, Bill Fitch, Don Chaney, and uh, I want to thank all my assistant coaches uh, for their hard work and for their loyalty, but one in particular, Carol Dawson, he's my big brother, he's my mentor. He promised me he would, he would share his vast knowledge of the game, and he did. It was like I was in a, 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 uh, in a foxhole with my brother, and he had a great sense of humor, and it's good to smile when things get tough. And as we go through life, you know, we have some important relationships. And one of the most important in my life was with a guy by the name of Calvin Murphy. I, I roomed with that guy for nine years. What an assignment. And I watched that little sneaky son of a gun very closely. And what I saw was how hard he practiced, how he pre prepared himself for every game, and how he played through injury. And I want to say to you, Murph, Thanks for inspiring me. You made me better. You know, I've, I've talked a lot about hard work, and, and a lot of times when Dad's out chasing his dreams, the children in the family suffer. But not in my family, because we had an MVP, and that MVP was Sophie T. And she did a tremendous job raising my three kids. Uh, two of them are here today, Nicole and Trey, and they know how proud I am of, they know how proud I am of my basketball accomplishments, but it doesn't come close to how proud I am of them for just being good people. And lastly, I want to, I want to thank the great sports fans of Houston. Thank you for pushing us to higher heights. Thank you for sticking with us when we had setbacks. And thank you for believing. I love you, Houston. Stay with us as we present our final award of the night, announcing the 2020 Houston Sports.